everybody welcome back to the channel so today we have actually got a few things going on I am gonna throw these on which I'll show you what they are in just a second really excited these just came in but I got some chick-fil-a I need to eat some lunch first so I'm gonna eat that real quick and then we're gonna go over what's going on today all right guys so as you know I am on my way to pretty much block out everything on the truck that's chrome. I know I should have got the sport appearance package, I should have got the midnight edition, but the dealership I went to, they didn't have any and they didn't have any coming in. And uh, as you know, I drove out of state to get it, so I wasn't really at a time where I could wait for one. Anyways, that's okay because it makes for more content and uh, more mods to the truck and I like doing mods. So, uh, one of the last chrome badges, as you can see, this is the last chrome badge on the truck is these side ones that say 1500 5.7 liter Hemi now you could just plasti dip those um, I think wrapping them would be pretty tough, but you could plasti dip them. I ended up buying these from Mopar I think it's 75 bucks for both But then you don't have to worry about the plasti dip peeling or anything like that or You know having to tape off stuff and these are, these are super nice gotta use my foot to hold the package here. Look how nice these are so these are a nice satin black. So these are kind of the next mod for the Ram. I, I've just been waiting for them to come in. So this is obviously the other side, but that's essentially what it'll look like. So give me just a second. We're gonna throw these on real quick. They just have these little clips on the back. So I've just got to unclip the chrome ones that are in there right now, and then we'll toss those in and we'll get to the rest of the video. All right guys, so pretty simple. They just pop out and then pop right back in. Um, there's just some clips on the other side holding them, but look how good that looks. Ugly chrome. Nice satin black badges. Man, that looks good. Alright guys, now to get in the real point of this video, we are actually towing our enclosed trailer to Lubbock. I was, I was already going to Lubbock today, so Rigo's actually going to meet me there because he's purchasing Kevin's trailer. So I'm just going to end up towing it there because he lives in Kermit, which is near Odessa, so Lubbock's kind of like halfway for both of us, and I was already going that way. So this will make for a good video. The truck, I mean, the trailer won't be loaded, but you can kind of get an idea, and I can get an idea of how well uh, this truck does with trailers. Obviously, there's no weight in it, but it is a 24-foot enclosed double axle trailer. Um, we've towed the Hellcats, the Demons, pretty much everything, all the cars with it. Um, we've had it fully loaded. And uh, it'll be a little bit different because this is not a large Ram 2500 turbo diesel, which I'm used to towing with. Um, I think these are kind of just my speculations. It may sway a little more. You got to remember, we're in West Texas, so it is freaking windy as shit here. So it may sway a little more. A little bit because it has a little bit shorter wheelbase it doesn't have the weight of a ram 2500 you know the 2500s are a lot heavier than these small half ton trucks so that's kind of just my guess it might sway a little more it should pull it no problem especially because there's no weight in there um if there was a car in there plus the trailer you're probably you gotta remember hellcats if you don't know are like 4500 pounds dry so they're very heavy cars um so a hellcat and that trailer you're getting closer to the max capacity um, an open trailer with a Hellcat would tow it no problem, but I think an enclosed with a Hellcat, especially if you have to go up and down hills, but if you're in flat Texas, shouldn't be a problem. But gonna kind of give you guys my opinion on how it drives going out there. It is a two hour drive. It's pretty straight though. It's mostly highway, so it shouldn't be too bad. But I'm kind of give you an idea and give you my thoughts on what it tows like. So good thing about almost all new vehicles when you put them into reverse, is that they've got this to help you line it up. So they've got the dash line in the middle and it lines up with your hitch. So it's pretty easy to back up new vehicles. So just, I mean, you just kind of follow the line. As long as your truck is straight to begin with, you're pretty much there. So, let's see if we can get her spot on. And boom, just like that. Sorry for the annoying beeping. So let's go check how close we are on it. Look at that, right under. And you know, I'm not a professional driver, but I have driven trucks and trailers my whole life. But look at that. That's how easy it makes it. Anyone can do it. 
So that is the nice convenience of having the backup camera and with it having the lines. So if you guys have never seen this trailer before, it is nice because you just press a button and it goes down or up. Super nice, this is for the lazy people. I'm not really lazy, but it makes it 10 times easier and a lot faster. So I'll show you guys once I pull out onto the street, but you can see <laughs> just how low the truck already is in the back. It's a very large trailer, so it's definitely gonna make it squat in the back, but all trucks have a rake from the factory and this is the reason for it, because when you put weight on the back, then it levels it out. So if I had a leveling kit on the front, right now it would be pretty tilted um, in the back. So that'll be interesting to see. So yeah, you can see it's definitely lowered a little bit in the back. Um, so with some weight on there, it would definitely go down. So, you know, if you have a half ton, you may look into adding, you know, like a add a leaf or even some airbags would probably be the best option, which I may look into since I'll be doing some towing with the truck. But that's what she looks like. Let's see if we can get a far away view for you guys so you can really see. Alright guys, so I'm going to finish loading up, make sure everything is good to go, and then uh, we will catch you guys on the highway, kind of give you my thoughts on how it pulls. But truck is filled up with gas, I'm going to go get my dog, because I'm bringing my dog Cupcake, and then uh, we'll be off to Lubbock. Hey guys, so I've been driving about five minutes, and uh, I'll give you my first impressions. Now if you don't know, I had a Ram 2500 that I used to tow with, so this will be a huge difference. Obviously, comparing the two in towing is it's just not even fair, because it's just... You know, a Ram 2500 is so much heavier. It's got so much more torque. Not necessarily power, but it's just got a lot more torque. And it's got the suspension to be able to take, you know, such a long trailer. Um, if this trailer was loaded, this thing would have some problems. I can already tell you that. Now, take it all with a grain of salt because this is my personal opinion, but this is a 24 foot enclosed trailer. So any wind, and we're in West Texas, and I just looked, the wind's about 20 mile an hour today. Um, any wind and you can really feel the trailer with making the truck sway um, and the reason for that is the shorter wheelbase and the heaviness of the truck you know I've I've driven in heavier winds with uh, my previous Ram 2500 and you could feel it you knew it was windy out but it's not as apparent as it is now with the small half ton the truck is pulling it fine you just got to get a little bit more aggressive with the gas as with you know when you're in a turbo diesel you barely you don't even have to press the gas I mean you're just barely tapping on the gas and uh, it pulls it drives just as if there was not a trailer back there so with a shorter trailer something like an 18 foot or a 20 foot um, and even with a car on it I think this truck would do amazingly I think it'd be fine I've seen plenty of people do it people do it all the time you could probably tow a boat similar length uh, but I believe that 24 foot the length is what's really playing a role now you guys can comment down below Give me your thoughts, but I think it being enclosed and uh, It being 24 foot makes it a lot harder for the truck to pull and I'm not saying it can't do it I'm just saying the ease of pulling. It's just not that great. So I'm gonna make a video on the gas mileage in this truck but I will tell you what it is. I wanted to make a video on it before this, but I will tell you what it is. I was only getting 14 to 15, and I'm not truly happy about that. I thought it would get better than that, and maybe it will after the first oil change, but I do already have 1,600 miles on this truck, so it's not like it's brand, brand new. I mean, it's broken in a little bit. It's past the break-in point, if you guys would call it that, but it has not gotten much better. It was 10 the first day, and that's just because, you know, the truck doesn't move really. They have them on the lot but it's only gotten up to about 14, and it, it probably averages about higher 14, maybe 15, but it's it's real close if it gets to 15. Um, I've had F-150 EcoBoost, obviously those get a lot better gas mileage, but I never got to tow with mine, and I really wish I would've, because that would've given me a really good insight on how this truck tows. Now, like I said, this truck can tow, it tows just fine, I'm just giving you my opinion, and I think the trailer is probably the biggest culprit here, but, after, once we set the cruise, um, once we set the cruise and kind of get our speed going, we're kind of in like some construction zones here in Amarillo, so it goes 50, 55, 60, drops back down. So once we get past all this and we really get going to Lubbock, 
um, and we're going the same speed for a while. I'll kind of update you guys on what the mile per gallon is. It won't be completely accurate, but I wanted to see what it is because like I said, I have to be a little more aggressive with the gas with the trailer back there. But those are kind of just my first insights on what it's like towing with the 2019 Ram 1500. And like I said, a big culprit is the 24 foot long trailer, but it's not loaded. So I'll keep you guys updated. It's really hard to tell, but man, this wind is kicking this truck's ass right now. And like I said, I'll say it probably a thousand more times, it's most likely due to the length of the trailer. And, you know, we're in West Texas, how windy it is, but it is kicking its ass right now. Okay, so specs on the truck, if you're wondering, it does have the 392 gear. I don't have a trailer brake, uh, but you can add those from Mopar, they're like 200 bucks. So I don't have a trailer brake, but I'm not towing enough weight right now to need one, but I am gonna order one just so I have it in future towing. But this is a four wheel drive truck, uh, 392 upgraded gear ratio for towing, max towing. Um, and so you can see right now we're pretty flat. We're going 66 miles an hour and we're almost at, we're about like 27, 2800 RPMs. Let's see if you can hear the engine. So it's not struggling, but it's definitely, you know, it's in tow haul mode. Tow haul mode. Tow haul mode. So it's definitely, um, you know, it likes to hang the gears a little bit, which is a good thing because it allows you to have more power if you need to get up and go and pass or if you start going up a hill. So it does hang the gears a little bit more, but that's intentional. Um, so yeah, the wind though is kicking this truck's ass. I'm not really having fun right now driving this. I wish you guys could see how much it jerks back and forth. It's pretty crazy, honestly. And I haven't towed with a gas truck in a long, long time. And even when I did, it was never with an enclosed 24 foot trailer. So you gotta remember when the wind hits an enclosed trailer, it actually pushes the trailer where if it's an open trailer, there's, the wind can go around it, above it, below it, whatever. Um, but when it's an enclosed trailer, it takes all of the wind straight to the side of it or to the rear, whichever way the wind's blowing. So definitely an enclosed trailer is different to tow with, but like I said, the Ram 2500, it makes no difference. Now I'm still really happy with this truck. I love it. I was just really interested to see how it tows. And uh, you know, once I get my next car figured out, I'll get an open trailer and uh, we can make some videos on that because I assume it's going to do very well as uh, that'll be more within its range for what the truck can do. So we're gonna keep coasting it to Lubbock, but it is very windy and I don't feel real safe actually going anything faster than like 70 miles an hour. So, cause we're going about, now we're going about 67, 68 down this hill. Um, it's just when the wind hits and you're going 70 to 75, it really, really moves the truck and I don't like that. So. We're gonna keep going. I'll update you guys in a little bit on the miles per gallon, but just wanted to update you again on the way to Lubbock. All right, guys, he's got a lot more weight, but we're making passes in the Ram 1500. Passing up a F-350 dually, but he's got a lot more weight than we do. <laughs> All right, guys, so driving for about an hour. I don't know how clear you can see that or if you can even see it because the glare, but our current mile per gallon. We've got the cruise control at 70. Um, I've kind of gotten used to the little bit of sway back and forth. Just feels like you're on a choppy canoe ride. No big deal. Um, but the current is just keep bouncing between uh, six to eight is the current. So it's dropped my overall average mile per gallon down to 11.3. And like I said, we're about high 14, maybe 15 before. So with the trailer, with the wind, uh, we're on the highway, we're in tow haul mode, so it's hanging the gears a little bit more, which is causing us to burn a little bit more gas. Our current, like I said, goes between six and eight. We've got a slight hill right here. There's a couple small hills, but for the most part, it's pretty flat. So I'd say six to eight is a pretty good um, average number that you can expect. And this, like I said, this is with a 24 foot trailer unloaded but I guarantee the trailer still weighs, and I may be way off, but I wanna say a double axle trailer like this probably weighs somewhere between um, two to 3,000, maybe more like 2,500 to 3,000, I'm not really sure. Um, it's not an aluminum trailer, 
um, but it is wood floor, double axle steel frame. I'm, I'm not sure what the side metal is made out of. I don't know that much about the trailer because it's not mine. I just use it all the time. So, uh, but yeah. So the current, like I said, six to eight is what it keeps bouncing back and forth, what I've been watching. But I've been driving for about an hour and uh, like I said, dropped my average to about 11.2, 11.3. So not super bad. Um, kind of to be what it, kind of what to be expected when you have a gas truck pulling a large trailer like this. And uh, I kind of want to give you guys my little insight here. This isn't me bashing a gas truck. Everyone knows gas trucks don't tow nearly like a diesel. It's just a totally different ball game, and that's why diesels can tow so much more. And you got to remember when I used to tow with my diesel truck. For the diesel truck, it was it was like nothing because the max towing capacity was like 20,000 and I was maybe towing eight or nine at the very, very max. So not even half of its towing capacity work. Well, this feature is gonna come in real handy. So on the new Ram 1500, I think that's with any of the Uconnect updates, but when it shows the map on the navigation system, there's a little sidebar uh, panel and it tells you the closest restaurants, the closest gas stations, and uh, how far away they are. So it's got mileage, time, and which exit, which is really cool instead of having to like click on there and click through some of the options to get there. And that's gonna really help us because we are getting terrible gas mileage. We only have 26 miles left on the truck. And uh, when I left, I had about 310, 315, and Lubbock's only about 100. And, 30 miles away, so we're not gonna quite make it to Lubbock. We're gonna have to stop at one of these little small gas stations right outside of Lubbock, but we almost made it to Lubbock on a full tank. And that's kind of embarrassing. That's how bad of gas mileage it's getting. Plus, these do have a smaller tank. I don't know the tank size, but it is not the extended range one. That is something, I don't know if you can add that. Someone comment down below. I don't know off the top of my head if you can actually add a 36 gallon tank to these or not. I know on the diesels you can, and then on the F-150s you can as well, because I did on both the F-150s I owned, I had the longer, I mean the longer, the larger 36 gallon range um, fuel tank, which makes a huge difference, especially when you're towing because your gas mileage is cut in freaking half. So it makes a huge difference. I'm wishing I had that because uh, Cupcake and I might be taking a walk to Lubbock to get some gas for this, for this pig. So, I think, okay, I think actually this Abernathy exit has a gas station. Let's hope. So, let's hope they have a gas station here. If not, this video will not be completed as Cupcake and I will be walking and I will be pissed off at that moment. But we're gonna go find a gas station. I think we're gonna be good. And uh, then I'm gonna close out this video, kind of give you my thoughts on the actual towing with the Ram 1500 and Shit, where's the gas station? We're gonna find one. Oh, we made it! Woo! Hey. What do you think about the Ram towing? The thing does pretty good? It does pretty good, it just gets horrible gas mileage, huh? Huh? No thoughts? Okay, thanks for your input. We appreciate it. So hopefully you stuck around to see the overall impression of the Ram 1500 towing. Here's my thoughts. It definitely has the power to tow. It does just fine. Um, part of the reason I think the trailer is bouncing around a little bit and making the truck bounce is because it's unloaded. So when there's not weight on those leaf springs in the trailer, it doesn't ride very well. And this is a light truck being that it is a half ton. So it doesn't do too well when the load behind you is bouncing around. But I think it would do a lot better if there was weight in the trailer, plus, um, you know, it is windy because we're in West Texas. It's just windy out here. It's 20 mile an hour wind. So the gas mileage definitely sucks. I think the truck has plenty of power. And uh, like I said, with a little bit shorter trailer, an open trailer and a car, I think it'll do just fine. But we'll make some videos on that when that time comes so you guys can see some reviews on that if you're interested in towing. But I believe if you're only towing like one to three times a month, and you've got something less than 12,000 pounds, I think this truck does an awesome job. 
Um, for reference, my Ram 2500 was not tuned or deleted. It was completely stock, and it was getting nine miles to the gallon when it would tow this trailer with a car in it. Um, this one is, I'd say six to seven has kind of been the average. Six to seven miles per gallon if you keep it under 75. Um, and I think the reason for that is because it's in tow haul mode, so it kind of hangs gears a little bit more. That way it's easier for you to pass, and when you're coming up on hills, you're already in the correct gear. So that's just my final impressions of it. Like I said, I think it has plenty of power to tow. It doesn't have a problem pulling the trailer. When you're stopping, it doesn't feel like it's gonna push the trailer. I think it handles the weight real well. I think the biggest factors today with it bouncing around was that the trailer was unloaded and that it was windy. Obviously, a 2500 would do better because a heavier truck, it's, it takes a lot to move a heavier truck. Um, but I'll be really interested to see how it does with an open trailer and a car, but I think it'll be just fine. So, more truck reviews coming overall. I still highly recommend this truck. I love it. You just need to plan your gas station stops um, because it does have a smaller tank. It's not a large one. I want to say it's 21, maybe a 22 gallon tank. It's pretty small. Um, like I said, I don't know if there's an option, but if there is, I highly recommend a larger fuel tank option or getting in a spare one that sits in the bed because uh, my F-150 and on my Ram 2500, they both had 36 gallon extended fuel tanks and that shit's awesome. Saves you a lot of trips to the gas station. It just sucks when you have to fill it up because it's expensive. But that's gonna conclude today's video. I'm gonna go hang out with my girlfriend in Lubbock. Hopefully you guys have an awesome weekend and make sure you always comment, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat, bambi 39 if you want, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Now that is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Woo!